Our second snapshot of success comes from the Haemophilia Foundation of New Zealand, HFNZ. And to share their reflections on seeking direction and a voice from Māori, please welcome Haemophilia Foundation CEO Belinda Burnett and Māori Delegate for Piri Toto HFNZ, Patience Sterling. Thanks very much. That was um, a tough act to follow, so I'll do my best. Executive for Haemophilia New Zealand. I've been in the role for 10 years. Uh, prior to starting in the role, I was a volunteer for the uh, Haemophilia Foundation and uh, I've been involved in the strategic planning for some time and getting um, the journey that we've just undertaken. And uh, I will tell you about our very first um, strategic plan that we had in 2000. The board had a um, series of, of people coming from around the country that was a fair representation of our membership at that time. And it became really, really obvious that we weren't engaging very well with our Maori members. So the board undertook to um, engage with Maori. And that's all very well and very honourable making that decision, but how do you actually proceed and, and do that? So for the next nine years, absolutely nothing happened. There was um, lots of shoulder tapping and um, lots of um, people being approached within the community saying, well, you know, can you do this, can you do that? But the, the task was so onerous for one person to, to try and engage all of our Maori membership. Um, it, no one wanted to undertake it. And coupled with that, um, no one was prepared from within the Maori community to um, step on the toes of other iwi because we're, we're talking about a national organisation. Um, we needed someone who was going to encompass the whole country. So, so we started off with this real passionate aim to um, connect and build up our Maori membership, but we, we got absolutely nowhere very fast because there was no one to actually take ownership. So in uh, 2009, I decided that um, I would follow in the footsteps of another organisation that I had uh, some connection with who said, they just did it. They just did it. They just started. So I thought, okay, well, how hard can that be? We'll just start. So what we did was we um, we employed a um, external data. We needed him to, or him or her, it turned out to be a him, to be Maori, work within the health industry, have experience in setting up a group, and knowledge of um, writing in terms of reference. And then from our database, we had 48 people who identified as Māori. We invited all 48 and 18 attended. And that was the first TUI held in 2009. So the outcomes of that TUI were pretty impressive. The, the discussions around the day were, what are your experiences? How can Haemophilia New Zealand best support our Māori community? And how or should Māori be more involved within Haemophilia New Zealand. So the recommendations that came from the Hui were there did, there did need to be a creation of a um, Māori dedicated position on the National Council, because prior to that there wasn't one. Um, they did need to meet in another um, three or four months time to make sure that things were ticking along. And also there was a consideration discussed at that time of having a dedicated Māori field worker where Haemophilia New Zealand employs outreach staff throughout the country to um, look after our members within various regions. So the idea was mooted at that time to have someone employed specifically for our Maori community. The second hui that was held in August 2009, and that was attended by 22 members within our Maori community, so we'd already picked up another four people. The, um, that hui was interesting because we learnt um, a lot of the mistakes that we've made at our first hui and we were so 
eager to not offend and to be um, absolutely, you know, for Maori, by Maori, no Pākehā faces at all at the meeting, that we'd inadvertently insulted our group because I didn't go to the meeting because clearly I'm not Māori. Um, what I should have done was communicated and said, do you want me there? Uh, and because yes, they did, but I was obviously trying to um, be politically correct by not saying, well, here I am. Um, and so that was a lesson learned, that you know, communicate, 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 and keep talking to each other so that you know what you should and shouldn't be doing. The, um, what's happened since? 2010 at the AGM, the constitution was formally amended to establish, at that time, the Māori group was called the Rupu, and uh, a Māori representative was on, on the National Council. It was also ratified at that AGM that each of our regions would have a Māori representative which would form towards the, um, the Rōpū Committee. The changes of the constitution were to recognise that Māori were tangata whenua and that all, all of our members who identified as being Māori were considered part of the Māori membership. So they were really, really very easy little changes made in the constitution but it made a really huge difference to the community and how they view themselves. So what have we done? We've changed our practice within HFNZ and uh, we have we have just completely en encompassed everything um, about uh, Maori culture. We have a, a pulpery and a residential educational workshops if that's appropriate. We have mihi when, um, whenever that is appropriate. Um, Whakato, where we're having overseas guests. Um, we always start every meeting with a, a karakia and a waiata. There, we've just built that in to our residential educational workshops from all ages and stages. And that met with some resistance um, at the beginning from some of our Pākehā members, but we just ploughed on. We just carried on doing it. And now it is absolutely accepted. And the noises that we got five years ago are now completely silent and it is just an accepted part of our organisation. The um, Peritoto today, completely self-governing, they changed their name in, in 2012 to Piti Toto, which means the blood that binds and I will let patients uh, explain that in great um, more detail, I don't want to murder the Māori language any further than I already have. Um, Piritoto hold three national meetings a year, including their AGM, and they have a biannual whānau noho. And uh, the most exciting development for us as an organisation is that we went from those 48 members to we now have 124 members who identify as Māori uh, throughout New Zealand. And that is 10% of our membership. So that is, they are hugely overrepresented by haemophilia within the Māori community in New Zealand. And that is why it was such an important part of, of getting this group to, um, to really be a part of the organisation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand over to Patience and let her finish the presentation. Hi there, my name is Patience Sterling. Um, so just to carry on from Belinda, uh, HFNZ have allowed space for Piri Toto to create what works well for them. So humbly speaking, it's about being Māori. Because for Māori, blood is spiritual. So our whānau used, when our whānau first engaged, they're very whakamā about engaging because they're shy and they're embarrassed and they really don't want to talk about their blood being bad. So last year, because the majority of our members are in Tamaki Makoto or Auckland, um, we've uh, created a charter that will help uh, guide a process and making it user-friendly for our future newcomers. So our Pukatoki we created 
that I'll translate, Kahiwara, be alert, we stand here, you stand there. Our blood allows us to, we are as one, together, for all time. Tihe Modi order. Our mission statement, which is a bit of a misprint, is Piri Toto, the blood that binds us. Piri Fano, linking us as a Fano, connecting our knowledge, uniting our love. So it's about building more relationships, as I heard earlier, um, in Sri Aotearoa. Um, so keeping it simple, Piri Toto allows new members to identify who they are. We created three steps to to enhance our whānau, to um, bring them in one at a time. So by keep, um, Piri Toto make, is making the connection, that's our first step. Piri Tata is supporting the whānau and Piri Tonu is continuing the journey. Piri Toto is every Māori who carries the haemophilia gene because haemophilia are not just the bleeders, it is the women who carry the gene as well, like myself. They are unique to encompass this attachment. So how do we do this? By our relationships with HFNZ and um, sending out our pānuis to all HFNZ Māori members on the database and establishing an action plan that is based on tikanga, values and belief that is imperative to this kaupapa being successful. It's about the one person, the ko o. The o is that one person who connects to the whānau. Usually it's only one member in the whānau that has a bleeding disorder, sometimes it's more than one. But so we concentrate on the O. Um, they are identified in the whānau or the whanaungatanga. So building positive relationships with the individual, the whānau and the extended whānau. We hope to attain this connection by upholding te taha Māori, which is a collaborative approach towards doing things in a Māori way. For example, our komatu kuia who guide us, not, in, not so much in the bleeding disorder, but making sure that we do things the right way. Our tuakana tēnā at our hoi's, the older ones are teaching the younger ones and sometimes vice versa. Our kanohi hiki te kanohi hui, at face to face meetings, and our favourite which is our marae noho where we have a good um, whanonga tango. Um, Sorry, I just have to skip one bit of a misprint here. Then we, our second step is Piri Tata. So from the beginning as a seed, we have continued to develop a strong Piri Toto whānau, and especially in Auckland because that's where most of our members are. This has been proven to be very successful. The strategy now is to reach out to our Piri Toto whānau throughout Aotearoa. We believe it is important for each individual to share their whakapapa, their hemophilia whakapapa, because hemophilia is hereditary. Um, express their personal journeys, their struggles, and what works well with, when coping with haemophilia. So by a way of kōrero, we continue the connectedness of Piri Toto for wellness and well-being. Oh, I'll just go back now. And then our third step was Piri Tonu, so Piri Tonu is the continuing on. We will continue to commit ourselves to, our, to Piri Toto by maintaining effective leadership that will teach others to learn and continue with open communication. Piri Toto's strategy is to organise annual marae noho, pro promote regional activities to provide opportunities to meet and mihi new whānau. Also during HFNZ, um, educational programmes for our tamariki, um, educational programmes for our teens, for our mums, our sisters, um, this gives us also an opportunity to connect with those relationships. However, to, to continue moving forward, we must acknowledge the past. He tohu whakamau mahara, in remembrance, we will remember those who suffered and passed on, but worked extremely hard for the betterment of this organisation. Moi mai, moi mai rākau tau. Piri Toto also gives recognition to all the stakeholders of of this course because without them we would be nothing. Um, 
So HFNC, they have produced some great leaders through their educational programs. And they're going to be our future leaders as well. Um, so, um, so this is our Marae Noho from 2013. All the ones in the front row are all our leaders, but they have been to a lot of educational programs run by HFNC, and we hope they'll continue what um, we've started. Um, we've only implemented three steps. We, they're probably going to implement new steps, but if it doesn't work, well, we come back to our three steps. At least we keep that uh, where we've started from. And um, yes, here we go. So on behalf of Belinda and I, come on to United Taku Korero, Noraida Etapano, Ihoma Rairanga Terima, Matiato Koto, Etiaki Imanaki, Inga Wakato, Tena Koto, Tena Koto, Tena Koto Kato. Thank you.